Welcome to another STEM tutorial. In this video, we'll be programming the secant method together in Python. We'll assume that you're already familiar with the secant method algorithm, so we'll focus on getting it into Python. But in case you do want a bit more background on the secant method, please click the link in the upper right hand corner of this video to check out our 10 minute secant method video. We'll be using the same polynomial in this example. We'd appreciate if you could help spread the word on our numerical methods tutorials by hitting like and subscribe. Okay, so let's get coding. So the first step of the secant method algorithm is to define our user defined inputs. So as you can recall, the first item we want to do is make two initial guesses for the secant method. So I'm going to define two variables, x1 and then x2 to make these initial guesses. And we'll be using the same values as in our secant method explanation video. So x1 is going to equal 6, which is our first initial guess value, and x2 is going to equal 4. And as you know, these are guesses. You can make these whatever you like. So you don't have to choose 6 and 4. You can choose 10 and 5 or higher values as well. Then I'm going to move on to defining two other values. First of all, the tolerance value for our stopping criteria. So in this example, we're going to say when the absolute value of our f of x is less than 0 0.5, we can stop iterating. So we'll just type that this variable named tolerance is going to equal 0 0.5. And we need this to define our stopping criteria. And again, this value can be whatever you like, keeping in mind that you want to get as close to your root as possible. And then we'll also define the number of iterations. So the amount of times we want to complete our loop that we'll program later. So I'll call a variable number of iterations and I'll just say 20, but you can make this value as high as you like. Now where we've defined our user defined inputs, as a next step, we want to define our polynomial. And we'll do this using a function in Python. So I'll write def, and I'm going to call this function funct. You can call this whatever you like. And we'll be inputting our x value to calculate our f of x value. So as you can see in step number two, you require some calculations of your f of x values. So from our example, we know that our f of x equals x to the power of 3 minus x to the power of 2 plus x minus 5. And so then we've completed the expression for our function. So we're just going to return our f of x value once everything's calculated. So what we'll just do together is we'll run the script so far to make sure everything's okay and that there are no errors. So we'll just hit this green play button up here and we see that everything ran correctly. We don't have any red lines. If you do have some red lines here and some errors, just make sure that you copy everything here correctly. But if everything's fine, we can just move on. So now we're going to get to the looping part for step number two. So we're going to iterate by writing a for loop. So for i in the range, and we're going to start with a value of 1 and we're just going to use 1 since we're going to always print our value of i and say that this is our first iteration. And we're going to loop up to our maximum number of iterations, which we define as our num of iter up here. And we're going to do this in increments of 1. And as you see in step number 2, to be able to calculate our x, we first need to calculate two f of x values. And I'm going to call the first f of x value f of x of 1, corresponding to my f of x of x of 1. So all we're going to do is call the function we just programmed, function, and input our x of 1 value. And we'll also do the same for our f of x of our second x value. So I'll call it f of x of 2, and it just equals, again, calling the function, func and we input our x of 2 value. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to print a message so that I can always see what value did we calculate with each iteration so that something's been displayed here in our console. So I'm just going to type that with every iteration, I'd like an update on the value of i, so the iteration value. So I'll just convert the numeric value of i to a string. And then I'm always going to print my x and f of x value as well. And I'm always just going to print the value for the second x value, so f of x of 2. So I'll type the x value 
always making sure to add between each of the strings, not forgetting that plus value. And then we're going to print the second x value. And what I'm also going to print is my f of x value. Great. So if you don't see any x out here, if you're using spider, everything's okay. If you do have a red x out here, just make sure that you added all these plus symbols in your message. Otherwise, you aren't combining your strings. Now where we've calculated our second f of x value, what we're going to do with each iteration is first check whether or not we've met our stopping criteria. So we're going to write if the absolute value of our f of x of 2 is less than our tolerance, so our stopping criteria that we defined up here, it's less than our tolerance value, then we can exit this loop by breaking. And of course, if we don't meet this tolerance, we need to calculate our new x value, which we'll do now. So we're going to say our x of 3 value is going to equal the equation we've written in step number 2. We now have all of the components, our x's and f of x's. So it's going to equal our x of 2 minus our f of x of 2 times our x of 2 minus x of 1 divided by f of x of 2 minus f of x of 1. And of course, once we have our new x value, we can now define that our x of 1 is going to equal the x of 2 value, and the x of 2 is going to equal the x of 3 value. So we're overwriting our variables here so that we can use them again when we loop up into the second iteration of this for loop. So with this, we've programmed the secant method. I'll do one last thing. At the very end, so once I've exited this loop, i just like to write a little message saying that we've found our zero and the location of the zero. So I'll just write it now and you can copy it if you like. So now I've written this statement saying that your zero is located at the x and f of x value. So where this is all done, we're just gonna hit this play button up here to run our script. So here you can see the values of x and f of x with each iteration. And at the very end, we see our message that our zero is located at an x value of 1.89 and at a y value of 0 0.13. So we're quite close to this zero. So there you have it. We hope we were able to guide you and that your program is running successfully. If you have any questions, please feel free to type them in the comments section. We also cover a lot of other numerical methods topics in other videos, so we encourage you to check out our channel and our numerical methods course at stem-tutorials.com. Thanks for watching.